Believe it or not, it's been nine years now since we had access to Apple CarPlay. Yeah, it's been nine years since Apple CarPlay was released. And throughout those nine years, these are the apps I highly recommend others to at least be aware of and definitely utilize to have a nice, pleasant CarPlay experience because CarPlay, especially when it's combo with third-party apps, makes the whole driving experience so much better. Like one of which is the Chevron app, which allows you to basically pull up to any Chevron and literally pay right here on your display. It works pretty well. Unfortunately, I'm unable to demonstrate this because we're driving an EV. I'll talk more about the car that we're using in a little bit. But with the Chevron app, so long as you have your profile set up and you have your payment of choice all set up, you can literally pull up to the gas station, select up right here, as well as look through the routes that you're taking so you can actually pull up and know ahead of time if there's a Chevron gas station on your way. Unfortunately, it doesn't show you the price though. I wish that was something they added. But once you pull up, you could tap the fuel up section tap fuel up and so long as you're right next to it you can actually you can actually pay the stall right here on the dash without you having to get out and take out your wallet super useful i used it a couple of times and i highly recommend and it's free to use for this service now when it comes to overall navigation the three apps i recommend aside from apple maps is waze waze is cool due to the fact that it gives you access to a large community as we all know waze is basically community focused and that's how they've been able to succeed and become a massive competitor with big brands like google and apple maps and you have all the important creature comforts one of which is the speedometer tells you the speed that you're going right there as well as the speed limit of that area but you have all the important things such as the capability to bookmark some of the addresses you like to save as well as full access to a whole keyboard which you go ahead and enter and dictation of course and whenever you report something you tap here and you can either report a speed trap a car accident and traffic Waze is really cool due to the fact that it actually saved me a lot of times and headaches being stuck in a traffic jam due to an accident and also since it's community driven uh, people will actually point out cops so you're prepared to slow down so you don't get a ticket. So when it comes to daily commutes I love using Waze but when it comes to long commutes I still reverse back to Google Maps and this is just all due to the fact that not only does it share all the similar features that Waze has like the bookmark capability but I like the fact that Google Maps allows you to actually view things in satellite view. Whenever I'm driving at a new location or new spot, satellite view makes things super easy and convenient, especially when it's broad daylight, you can actually visually see the terrain and allows me to basically predict turns a lot easier as if I'm actually a resident there. So I just like utilizing this due to the fact I can visually see bridges and lakes. And of course you can zoom in and zoom out. You have all the important tools that a map service will typically provide. But one that's underestimated is On The Way. The cool thing about On The Way that I like the most is not only does it give you like a live overview of like the current forecast, weather conditions and stuff like that. Here you can see we have a lot of snow that's nearby me. But if we actually go ahead and enter address, oh, it even shows you little arrows of the direction that the wind is pointing. It's super useful for this feature and I like the fact that it's free. But when you actually go ahead, we actually go ahead and enter an address, for example, allow it to load. This is the beauty that I like about it. And it uses Apple Maps, by the way. It's not using like a sketchy third party. So it's pretty reliable. But here, if we actually start the route, it not only will show us our current weather condition, but as well the weather condition, how it's going to be like once we arrive. I love using this when I'm driving through the snow because I'm not going to be left off guard with my pants down or something like that I'm able to adapt while I'm driving to the current weather conditions so this will actually tell you the routes and the time when the weather is going to start changing while you get there to your destination so it's pretty cool for that exact reason which is why I think this is a very powerful app to also consider and now another app I like using the most is audible audible I treat this like a podcast in a sense, just allows me to be entertained. So if I'm driving, I'll feel like listening to Harry Potter. I can simply just tap on it right here or even add some podcasts, but I don't recommend using Audible for your podcast needs. But you do have your collections here. You can generalize things if you have like a large, large library. And since it's Audible, once a month, they give you like a free book, which I like. And I really do try to utilize this as much as possible. But if you're a real podcast listener, 
I highly recommend at least being aware of Overcast. Overcast is super straightforward. I like using this app due to the fact that it doesn't bombard you with a bunch of random podcasts that the app recommends or suggests that you might be interested in. No, it doesn't do that. It literally keeps things simple and literally straightforward as you can listen to your new episodes from your latest podcast or you can tap all episodes in the podcast you have selected. You could easily like navigate all the different episodes that they have. So it's super easy to navigate and it's awesome due to that. That's It's literally straightforward. Because the thing I don't like about the official one from Apple is it'll actually bombard you with a bunch of random podcasts like you see right here. Yes, it's easier to browse and discover new podcasts, but if you're just driving, you just want to listen to what you, you're familiar with, uh, Overcast is my recommendation just due to the fact that it's simple and it works and it doesn't bombard you. Now, another app that I recently discovered is Brave. And yes, this is a web browser app, but it works differently. And I really do like this because you can actually download your videos and listen to it as you're driving. So this one does require you to launch the main app first, which I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate. So here we are on the YouTube webpage. Nothing out of the ordinary. I'm not signing in or anything like that. Just doing this for uh, informative content purposes. So I'm not gonna be signed in. But if we go ahead and select hot ones as a fine example, right here, you can actually download this video. Let me lower the audio real quick. You can actually download the video Add it to the playlist, and you can actually browse your previous saved playlist on this web browser, and it will actually download the video audio so you can actually listen to it offline. So if we go ahead and launch the Brave app right now, and we go to our saved playlist, we saved this one a while ago, and it's literally playing a Mr. Beast video that we saved, and it's just playing the audio format. It's super cool due to the fact that it doesn't require you to have YouTube Red or anything like that. Literally any video that's on that's on a web browser, you can save it offline and create custom playlists and listen to it later as you're driving. So that's Brave in a nutshell, and it's free to use. Now another great app that got my attention is the new Panorama Bread, because here you can actually select a nearby cafe, select it, and then you can go on popular items and literally make a mobile order right here on your display. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably order mac and cheese, and we're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and go to the cart. I'm gonna verify it. I'm actually next to it first though. So that's the one we're next to. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And we're gonna go ahead and go into shopping cart. And we order mac and cheese, our taxes, and proceed to check out. And just like that, we just made a mobile order. Now we just have to go through a drive through and go ahead and pick up our mac and cheese that we just ordered. So that's a uh, Panera bread in a nutshell. Now, if you need to see the current weather conditions you just, and you don't wanna use that map navigating app, you can always just go on weather largesy. Where's la la la? I don't know. I can't pronounce that for some reason, but it'll actually show you the current forecast right here. So you don't have to take out your phone. You could be a responsible driver and just see the forecast right there. You can also tap on it too. It will play like a voice brief overview of the current weather conditions. Our afternoon overcast tonight with scattered rain showers likely. Lows level off around 46. Winds out of the south, 30 to 40 miles per hour. So yeah, that app is pretty cool due to the fact that you could quickly just get an idea how the current weather conditions is and listen to the forecast for the upcoming days. But there's three crucial apps that I highly recommend others use, especially if you drive an electric vehicle or even a plug-in. And that is Electrify America, Plug Share, or charge point, which is these three. Electrify America allows me to actually get an idea how many stalls are available. So in our location right now, we're here at the Target. We could select chargers right here, and we have, we could actually, well, if it didn't crash, we could actually like start charging right here on the display. So once you get out of the car, you just plug it into your vehicle and then get back in. You don't have to take out your card or anything like that. Again, very similar to the Chevron one. But here you can also like, see ahead of time how many stalls are available. So very similar to what Tesla does. That's Electrify America. You have filters, you can monitor your recent charge as well, as well as bookmark some of your favorites and also manage your subscription plan if you are subscribed. And then with ChargePoint, very similar. You can just select different chargers and see what's around. And then Plug It Share is also my last resort in case Electrify America is acting funny and you look for other chargers. I have that capability. Just unfortunately, it's not loading on my screen at the moment, but it does work. I've used this in the pack. There it goes. 
and I could actually monitor not just Electrify America, but also other third parties that might be available. That's what PlugShare allows you to do. But I primarily for my location, I rely on Electrify America. I just, I just have more access to it than other third parties around my area. And then other than that, all the other apps I use are pretty much standard. For music, I use basically Apple Music or sometimes I use YouTube Music. I don't personally use Spotify. I used to have a membership there, not really. And I have Amazon Music due to the fact that it's free if you have a Prime subscription. Aside from that, there you guys have it. Those are the apps I recommend others to at least be aware of that exist and I highly recommend at least trying out. So I'll be sure to include them all in the video description down below. Now more about the vehicle that I'm currently using. This vehicle was provided to me by Kia USA and this is their brand new EV6. It's not a sponsored video but I am utilizing this vehicle to make this video for you guys. So in case you're curious the type of car we're in, we're in an EV6 and yes, it does have the GT emblem right here for the GT switch, which allows this vehicle to go zero to 60 in just under four seconds. It's a fun car. Stay tuned for the full review of that video. Aside from that, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya. Yeah, I got the mac and cheese order. Let's go.